and welcome back to the Tracks of Success Story webinar series with American company Bush Brothers. I'm joined today by... Hello, my name is Mike Yost. I am the president of Mesa International. Mesa is a 24-year-old not-for-profit industry association that's focused on finding the business value at the intersection of where manufacturing meets IT. Hello, my name is Dave Ray. I'm the Vice President for Operations here at Parsec Automation. We are the supplier for Traxxas, a leading operations management and manufacturing execution software. Hello, my name is Travis Tomaszewski. I'm an Operations Area Manager at Bush Brothers & Company. Uh, we are a producer of baked beans, and we have been using the Traxxas software for about five years now. And I'm Catherine Gutierrez, Director of Client and Partner Relations here at Parsec. Today we will be focusing on operator engagement and delivering intelligence. Mike, I'd like to ask you from your perspective, as organizations move further along the capability maturity model, can you share with us a little about how SOPs evolve? Certainly, um, a couple of different phrases come to mind for me, uh, things like knowledge is king or information is power. Uh, things that just show the importance of having visibility into your operation and maturing along your journey. And as companies are successful doing that, that knowledge that they're gaining just enriches their environment and empowers them to continue to improve on their operations. So people typically have a good handle on what their operations are, and what they want to do, and then they can find, uh, they can refine them, they can find the tweaks, find the losses, and again, if they're in a culture of acceptance of the manufacturing intelligence that they've gained and they use that intelligence to drive improvement, then it's feeding into that cycle and allowing people to sharp, sharpen and improve their processes all the way around. Yeah, and, and I know part of that process improvement could definitely include communication. Travis, from your perspective, I know shift logs can be challenging and sometimes incoming shift operators can have trouble understanding or reading notes from previous shifts, which can cause the same problem to occur each time a new shift begins. Can you share with us how Traxxas has helped you to overcome some of those challenges? As we kind of mentioned earlier, we, we utilize something called journal entries, which allows the operators to provide a little more insight into the data uh, that Traxxas is reporting automatically. They can type in anything that happened and, and be able to communicate it to the oncoming shift and it allows it to be in a typed form instead of handwritten so that people can actually read it. We've actually adapted recently our journal entries into our pre-shift meetings to be able to better communicate even still to the operators coming onto the line each at, at the end of each shift. The journal entries really have just become a huge part of every job. They've actually become a part of our SOPs that they're required in every job. We also have a couple of dashboards or uh, communication tools or monitors where we display all of our journal entries for operators to read. And they're in specific locations, one's right at the entrance of the plant or right by a workstation that uh, has kind of the control to uh, you know, change the outcome of that production line or labeling line. So yeah, uh, journal entries have become a huge part of communication for us here at Bush Brothers. That's great. Dave, from your perspective, have you seen Traxxas help impact overall production times and scheduling as a result of some of these features? Well, certainly it has. It Not only when you have this type of information that, that Travis was talking about available, and when you put an SOP to it, you can shrink time in all kinds of places and, and recoup things in the overall production schedule. So this can go beyond just uh, ensuring an efficient shift handover, um, perhaps with less talk, less evaluation of notes, knowing things are in a repeatable format, um, that there's a very defined way that these things are handed off and reviewed. And again, using things like reports out of Traxxas gives that type of, of repetition and, and confidence in what they're looking at. Beyond that, the ability to track other activities in production that people may not be able to get, we'll say, granular about what happened during a changeover. There may be a number of steps that go on, uh, sanitation, line clearance, machine retooling. So being able to leverage something like Traxxas to gather additional information about those steps, where they completed in a timely manner, where there are deviations or exceptions, this can also be things that can then be quantified, cataloged, analyzed, and used for improvement process that, again, 
looking at all these areas where certain activities beyond downtime that can have a significant impact on the production schedule if they're not completed uh, as successfully and efficiently, uh, Traxxas can gather information about those as well and, and again help to shrink all of that lead time. Absolutely. And as we talk about key activities and delivering actionable intelligence, delivery kind of paves the way as being the most important. So, Mike, from your perspective, how has the delivery of data changed in the last decade and what can be gained that was previously unnoticed? Well, we could spend all day talking about this topic because um, this is one area where the options available have just exploded in recent times. Um, you know, we all talked about information being on paper and the move to electronic delivery and mobile options. You know, nowadays we have the options to get faster access to personalized information. And with the analytical capabilities available, we're getting to the point where we really can find needles in a haystack that previously we couldn't find because we didn't have access to the data and you know, the power of the tools that we have today. So there really are significant gains to be realized by getting the right information to the right people at the right time. Thank you, I, I agree. And Travis, from your perspective, data gathering can then be challenging or it can be simple, depending on the tool that you have in place. How has Traxxas helped you to simplify data gathering and deliver it to the right people? Yeah, Traxxas has totally made huge difference for us here at Bush. We, obviously it's all automated, it's, it's put into dashboards, it's put into email reports. Uh, that are fully customizable. They can go out to different levels and departments in the business and provide them with the data that they need to be able to make decisions that are applicable to their jobs. Corporate dashboards have slightly de less detail than maybe what we see here on the, on the plant floor where they see a little more how did we produce, what's the throughput look like, we're seeing what happened to the machine, what happened to what caused the downtime. In that data, did Traxxas help you identify bottlenecks? It, it did a little bit. We kind of had predetermined bottlenecks um, prior to the implementation of Traxxas for our, to control our process, but we were uh, able to use the data to be able to manipulate and, and know is our bottleneck capable of more? Can we, can we get more out of our other pieces of equipment to be able to increase the throughput on that bottleneck, which is causing us to slow our line down or do something different prior to or after that bottleneck? So it didn't really identify additional bottlenecks, but it gave us further insight into the bottleneck that we purposely put in place for process control. That makes sense. And it brings us over into operator engagement. And Mike, I'd love to get your perspective. How would you share is the best way to motivate operators? Well, I think that we've already heard several um, points about this today. You know, Travis talked about uh, showing the operators that their voice is important. Um, Dave talked about Bush Brothers involving the operators in the screen uh, designs. So I think you have to make sure to recognize the role and the power of the operators and their expertise. And as discussed before, I think having the support of leadership and working through any challenges and issues is also paramount. Uh, I've, I've seen personally multi-million dollar systems turned off or bypassed with the plant manager's blessings because their operators felt that the system was getting in the way of them doing their jobs. So um, I think it's really important to engage people early, keep them engaged, um, and uh, as we already talked about, I think Travis and Dave have some good insights on the best ways to do that. I completely agree, and Dave, I'd love to get your perspective. You made a good point, Mike. What are some pitfalls to avoid, and what seems to work best for long-term ownership and improvement? We talked on a little bit on a, on a previous episode here about involving operators in certain aspects of the design of the system. Uh, you know, a, a major pitfall that we see, even if there's some engagement early, is the way the system's presented may leave operators with the thought that this is a big brother system. It's set to effectively uh, really uh, look into what are they doing right, what are they not doing right. Uh, big Brother is always watching. Uh, it can also be perhaps mispresented as something else that they have to do. They have to be keen in information. They need to be minding that system and it becomes an adjunct to their main job duty which is to keep the process and the equipment running. So 
pitfalls to avoid beyond just getting their involvement and their buy-in is to try to deliver a solution that is as easy to use as possible on the part of an operators and, and allows kind of this melding of automatic data collection, which can improve accuracy with the, the really relevant information that an operator will have that can contextualize that properly. And of course, as the system may evolve over time, not try to continue to inundate them with even more things to do with the system. Keep the interface efficient, keep it user friendly, uh, and again, continue to involve them even past the initial deployment um, so that they continue to feel like they have that voice and it's more a system to help them rather than oversee them. Absolutely. And in that spirit of user friendliness, Travis, did you find it difficult to get operators engaged and how did you answer and address management's interaction? There was a couple times where it was, it was a little tough to get the operators to engage. We found in our initial rollout of the system, engineering was kind of driving and IT was helping drive kind of the ownership of the system. We transitioned and kind of evolved as we did it and made it more of an operations focus. So the shift area managers or the shift leaders would follow up with the operators to help them to know that their voices were being heard. Management did the same thing, leadership. Uh, got out on the floor and really communicated and followed up on journal entries that they were putting into the system and just showed them that they did have a voice. There really wasn't a whole lot of resistance from management. In fact, it was they were continually requesting more and more reports that we were trying to build and trying to build for them so that they could get more of the information that they needed. So it just kind of showed that that the uh, engagement was there from for management from the start, and then just a little bit with a little bit of prodding, the operators really did come around to it very quickly, and they they really felt like they had a voice and could could show their opinions to the entire business. I think that's really important. And Dave, from your perspective, when you have seen a client company encounter resistance, what do you share with them, and how to address those kinds of issues? A lot of it is going to depend upon the, the, the culture of the company. There are some companies that, depending upon how they already engage and work with operators and other facets of the business, may have very specific approaches. There may also be ways that I will say they may wish to present and, and make data useful to operators. There may be some companies and factories where because of either unionization or other factors, tying information directly to, say, a shift may not be the best way to present things versus something that might be a little bit more equipment-centric or process-centric. So sometimes some of that resistance may be, as I mentioned previously, about how an operator may be presented. And when you're able to contextualize and perhaps make information available to them that may be in a different light, that can be useful. And certainly, engage them in what that system is going to do for them. If you can get the message across, the system adds value to what they're doing and maybe can make what they have to do a little bit more efficient, that can help eliminate some of these challenges to buy in. Absolutely. And Mike, I'd like to give you a chance to share your final thoughts on how a company can potentially use a tool in software to create engagement and ownership in the production part of the business. Well, I, I think the main thing I would stress is that everything we've been talking about here is, is not technical, right? Oftentimes, people get enamored with the technology, try to put it in an in improper place in the, in the process. You know, we talk about people, processes, and technology, and, and really, these are, are people and process-related things. So I, I think all of the insights that Dave and Travis have shared are spot on, and we just encourage people, keep your focus on your people, keeping them engaged, and then align the technology accordingly, and I think it'll be just fine. Absolutely. I agree. That brings us to the end of episode three of our Bush Brothers Traxxas Success Story webinar. I'd like to thank everyone for participating, Mike, Dave, and Travis. Thanks for sharing your thoughts with us today. And for our listeners, please join us in our last episode in the series, which is quality, compliance, and next steps.